today we are going to understand about the chol architecture so first we will start with some of the background why we are studying this architecture what are the basic principles of the architecture and later we will move into what's the basic precepts or basic principles of this architecture and how to make it and at the last of the class i'll show you some of the architecture via slides so have patience be in the class so first is the architecture architecture now if you are discussing about architecture we are discussing about some of the buildings how they are being made and first understand what is the evolution of it so we will see ki right from the vedic age right from the vedic age around 3000 years ago there was no such thing as the temple building or the idols of god there was no such thing like that the vedic people used to worship into the fire altars what's the fire altars to a type of havan kund where on one side the priest he sits and on the other side the jajman the patron sits and they do worship however for around 1500 years this continued and this remained the only mode of worship around the early gupta age we started placing idols what's the background of it so you must understand that this bharhut sachi gandhar mathura amravati they started depicting buddha in human form so obviously this architecture also has inspired the present day hindu culture we should not use the word hindu but still it's today's hindu culture so these gods were also being made their statues were being made inspired by the buddhist precepts of depicting buddha in the human form so there were idols now when idols were made and obviously idols of god so you need to place them somewhere respectable so one of the earliest temples developed and one of the earliest free standing temple which can be identified purely as a temple dekho in your house if you put god at one place you call it temple but it's not entirely devoted your entire building do not is not entirely devoted to temple or do not follow the temple architecture but when in gupta age there was a building made it was entirely a temple with all the precepts of temples or modern day temple it's third century ad temple at bhitargaon bhitargaon kanpur it's near kanpur 50 60 kilometers from kanpur one of the earliest temple appeared when gupta empire declined all of its architecture its culture its idols its literature being copied you see you must have seen ki how hollywood is being copied by bollywood separately by tollywood separately and there are various woods all of them try to copy the dominant culture of the time so gupta age has inspired or gupta architecture literature language everything has inspired the architecture of various places of india one of those inspiration was during the reign of chalukya we are in 6th 7th century ad in north various copies odisha so that's jagannath puri style of temple odisha style of temple in central india chandel style of temple you will see khajuraho temples in west the solanki style of temple where you will see dilwara jain temples or you can see present day akshardham temples. akshardham temples so they are the northern copy all of them were called the nagar style south also was inspired by these temples 
adopted the principles of temple making in the western region or in the deccan the chalukya have started developing their own temples obviously the principle or the model they have was the model of gupta and their temples later will be known as vesar style or chalukya style or karnat style we are not going to see that if anyone want to see that temple so he can see a temple in patta dakkal patta dakkal aihol and vatapi these are the three cities within 2 km from where the chaluk used to rule you must have heard a great king pulkeshi so this was the local style the most visible example of it is the earliest temple made by pulkeshi that is kya naam us temple ka virupaksh temple patta dakkal virupaksh temple patta dakkal it's a style of vesar what we are not going to discuss now the pallav has also got the inspirations of these temples pallav of tamil nadu andhra pradesh region they have developed their own style they have made some of the earliest temples at the shore of mamallapuram mamallapuram was a great port from where they used to sell the kanchi silk jo kanji varam silk you must have heard so at that port city of mamallapuram they have developed some shore temples today they are known as panch pandav temple nothing to do with pandav but there are five so we call them panch pandav temple and uh, a very big rock round rock is kept on a tilted plane we call it krishna's butter ball so if there is a very large state obviously the authority of king is centered only on some metropolis now this was the style adopted by chol from where we will start our today's lecture ki how chols have picked this pallav style and took it to new heights so this is what they did we will make a chol temple on page all of you if someone of you are interested in making it so continue making with me on this page i'll make a chol temple and that will make our job easy this ground is called adhisthan adhisthan the ground plan on which the temple is to be made on top of this adhisthan we have a raised platform a raised platform now what this platform is for so obviously this is the platform on which the temple is built this platform is called jagati jagati on at a place in jagati that's the temple that's the sanctum sanctorium garbhagriha where the main god will be placed this is called shri kovil in north it's called garbhagriha in english it's called sanctum sanctorium shri kovil kovil in tamil means temple periya kovil big temple श्री कोविल और गर्भगृह और सैंक्टम सैंक्टोरियम इफ इट्स शिव मंदिर इट विल बी दी अबोर्ड ऑफ शिव और द शिवलिंग विल बी प्लेस्ड इफ इट्स विष्णु मंदिर तो लक्ष्मी नारायण विल बी प्लेस्ड नाउ द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टेंपल आई एम नॉट वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन एक्सप्लेनिंग व्हाट आर द कंसेप्ट्स और 
what's the mythology of temple but it's that the energy from universe is being absorbed it's one of the concepts one of the concepts it's the similar principles on which pyramids are based that's why you will see ki all the pyramids and all the temples or whatever it's up moving and on top you will see it's like some so wo uh, antenna to capture obviously a room will be made on top of it so upon shri kovil a room is being made that's called the chamber or whatever where the god is placed when you will go to temple like you go to ujjain mahakal temple you may be allowed to enter sanctum sanctuary you may be allowed to pour your water or whatever to shivling but many a time a lot of bhakt in their over enthusiasm they do the funny things and then many a time you must have heard that that pujari or whoever stops so you may enter you may not enter based on temple management theek in the famous chol temple which i'll name later what the temple i am making you are not allowed to it so generally it's not some rocket science and then this chamber of the temple rises above and it's like when a thing rises above it starts getting smaller so the top of this is raised raised sorry for the drawing but this is how it goes up and this is called viman viman means the vehicle which takes you up. whatever takes you up becomes viman on the top of this viman a shikhar is being put shikhar in nagar style in northern indian style viman itself is called shikhar now it's a difference we are simply understanding the precepts of chol architecture first we will make the temple and then i'll explain you what are the precepts rather than the other way around on top of this viman a huge shikhar is being in the case of chol obviously we are talking about that tanjavur temple brideshwar it's one of the heaviest shikhar it should be round or obviously i could not this is called shikhar shikhar means the head the capital on top of shikhar obviously the energy of universe has to be absorbed and it will be absorbed by a kalash kalash is in this kalash if a single kalash it will be called kalash in the case of brideshwar temple there are more than one kalash that's why the lower one is called amar kalash because i have made kalash and amar kalash a bit bigger if you compare to this temple so i am making it again theek hai then we will move from this side and we are making temple the opposite side so first let me tell you ki when you are about to meet the god or when you are about to enter you need a place which is called vestibule or antaral it's like if we are going to meet prime minister of india so we will not simply leave our car or we will move enter into his office there will be a sort of lobby where we will be asked to wait to recollect ourselves to have a look on ourselves likewise you will see in north india it's by a shikhar in south india you will see a narrow passage 
just before the temple, just before you will meet the God, there will be a very narrow passage. One side people can only enter, other side they could only come out. That is called antaral or vestibule. We cannot see it from air. From outside, it's very difficult for us to see it. Antaral. It's a narrow passage. And then, this is called antaral. In English, we call it vestibule. Must be making sense for some native speaker, not for us. If this would have been Nagar style, I would have made it a mandap, again a raised thing, but in this southern Indian temple, in this southern Indian temple, it keeps on moving. And Antaral continues into the Mahamandap. Mahamandap. Now what is Mandap? So generally mandap means you must have heard in your marriages also that there is a mandap. Mandap is any place where people sit. Mandap is any place where people can gather together for kirtan, for bhajan, for a lot of purpose. So therefore, this is the place where you can come and you can chat and you can sing and you can do whatever you want. That's mandap. There is a gallery, pillared gallery where people sit. This continues into a small place. Can be looked from outside. This is where the statues will be installed, about which we'll see later. This is called Vahan Mandap. Vahan Mandap. And this is called Ardh Mandap. Now, nowhere it is written that what you can do in Mandap and what you can do in Ardh Mandap. Simply more than one Mandap. So, the nearer to temple is called Mahamandap, the far away from temple is called Ardh Mandap. And it's where the first part of temple is completed. Outside the temple, as we will move outside the temple, there is a raised pillar. A raised pillar. This is called Dhwaj. Dhwaj. Or can be called as, as Dhwaj Tam. Because it do not have the flag. It's a very thick Dhwaj stamp. It's a very thick pillar. Outside just Away from this Dhaj Stam, there will be a platform. Perhaps being used sometimes. Today it's not used. But the name will tell you what it is. This is called Bali Peetham. Bali Peetham. Steps are somewhere here. Outside Balipitam, if it's a Shiv temple, and obviously Sholar have made a lot of Shiv temples, you will see a bull known as Nandi. And here a Mandap. Mandap means any structure covering Nandi, known as Nandi Mandap. It's a very basic of Chol architecture. On this pyramidal Viman, 
or the entire temple, but especially Viman, you will have a lot of sculpture being made. It's full of sculpture being made. There are three types of sculpture found in Chol temple or any temple on temple walls. Three types of sculpture. First is of Dwarpal. Second is Yaksh Yakshini. What are Yaksh Yakshini? To? Wealth of or God of local wealth. Yes, if there is some pond, so Yudhishthir when he sent his brothers to drink water, so that pond belonged to a Yaksh. And Yaksh asked a lot of questions. Because that pond was of Yaksh. So Yaksh Yakshini. Or there can be Mithun. A very interesting feature. You will see the erotic figures involved in sexual activities. There is a Nagar style of temple. Chandel sub style of Nagar. Found in Khajuraho. Famous for their Mithun sculptures. They are famous for their Mithun sculptures. So these are the three type of sculptures found all across the temple, especially on this Viman. And now, this is only a part of it. If everyone has made this or whoever are interested have made this, so I am moving ahead and again no. because no. temple is not completed. It's only the Huh? Nitty gritty of temple which we have seen. If this is, let me make a small temple within a second. If this is what temple is. Far from temple, a lofty gate. This lofty gate is called Gopura. I'll explain for what this Gopuram is. In the case of Chol architecture, there are two. A inner one and the outer one. There are two Gopurams. This is inner Gopuram. This is outer Gopuram. And this is how you will enter. This is the basics of the temple. Now, although I have a lot of slides, but what I believe and what I do, that a student first watch this on Google images so that they should have a confidence that they are being taught the standard thing. Not that I have downloaded some slides, not that I have myself had some ways or some methods. So we are moving to Google for a, around one minute where I'll Brihadishwar temple. Acha, first let's understand what temple we have made. So the temple we have made is known as Brihadishwar temple. Is known as Brihadishwar temple. Also called Big Temple. In Tamil, it's also called Periya Kovil. Periya means big Peru. Kovil means temple. It was finished 1000 years ago. In 2010, when 
Shri Karunanji has his government in Tamil Nadu. The thousandth anniversary of this temple was celebrated. And a dance, a great dance of thousand dancers was enacted. 1010 AD, it was finished by Raj Raj Chol. Raj Raj Chol has finished this temple in 1010 AD. Now let's see some of its image in Google and we will feel that how this temple is. I guess we all can see the temple, the connecting vestibule, which is also raised in this case, but it's considered the part of temple and we do not make it separately. Then you will see how the mandap runs and then the vahan mandap a bit raised and again the ardh mandap which ends. A raised platform which is called Jagati. On top, we can see a shikhar, the heaviest of all, of around 46 tons. And then we can see on top of it two kalash. This is what this temple is. We will see an enclosing wall and we will see about this temple complex later. This gives us a better picture. There are a lot of sculptures. There is a Vahan Mandap. There are two Mandaps on both the sides of Vahan Mandap. And that's how the temple runs, the basic of this temple. If we see the top view of it, so that's how you can see. I guess everyone can see the two Gopurams, the two gateways. One is the outer gateway. Another is the inner gateway. And that's how the temple is. And just feel how majestically made. So, I think I should proceed. I have made it clear what I want to convey. And now let's again come why this temple is made so. What's the need of making this temple? So understand by the Chol time, temple was the center of social life. It used to employ a lot of dancers, which we will just see. It used to have a lot of professionals center of wealth, school, then it used to provide relief during flood, people used to enter it into the times of warfare, so a lot of like a community building. Now we'll see, if there is a community building, obviously you need a lot of rooms. And due to those rooms, temple has an enclosing wall, which is generally absent in the Nagar style of temple. Because Nagar itself says, they used to be placed, Northern Indian used to be placed inside Nagar, which was already enclosed by wall. So therefore, this Dravid style of temple architecture, which is Chol style, Chol is a sub-style of Dravid, we have a temple wall because it's made in a very hostile remote place and this temple wall has a lot of rooms surrounding it to store the wealth where the priest will live the dancers will live and everyone else will live this is what they call it Chaltri or Chavadi. That's why when the southern Indian will move into the northern places like cities like Mumbai, they will start living in this way. And their living today is called the Chavadi or Chal, where there is a central ground and the surrounding flats. So they have followed this style. Even if you will see, go to Mumbai or you will see the movies of Mumbai. 
you will see people living in the chawls and that has a central field and enclosing flats one floor single floor double floor whatever this is the main gateway because it's the center of wealth also it may be targeted by many people and this is where our temple was made this is where the temple is being made later during this chol time when the temple grows it get, gets bigger and bigger it invest in itself a lot of people come you must have seen annual fair mele lagte hain at religious places not because of simply because of religious importance people also come to these places to buy other things if you will go to vaishno devi or any pilgrimage center you will see cds being sold toys are being sold electronic goods are being sold mobile covers are being sold so generally it becomes the market for nearby places for us it's maybe a annual fair or simply a pilgrimage but people who are living nearby for them it's a source of employment it's also fulfilling their own needs so as temple grew bigger and another outer wall is being created and a larger and bigger gopuram that's why chol temples have two gopurams and by the time we will see chol and later pandyan and by the time of 17th century nayak style we will see gopuram on all four sides and all the sides have more than two gopuram minakshi amman temple of madurai has 14 gopuram now that's how the number of gateways will increase because people will want to enter from every side to save themselves from congestion and also to save themselves from walking in those days cars and e-rickshaws were not available so it will be a later development but today we have only two in chol times there are only two gopurams on a single side this will also have some of the pillared rooms or chambers and very interestingly when you will see the chols have dug a moat moat means a dig a canal where water is being filled so water filled canal on its all sides obviously to fulfill the water needs of the people but most importantly it's built like a fort that's the type of importance and wealth and community center it became that they have to save it from the outer attacks so, water filled canal also called as moat so this is how their outer structure is inner chaltri outer chaltri and this mid place is called where people walk this mid place is called parakram due to the term parikrama parakram so when we will see our temple from top top view we can see how we have a parakram how we have a inner chaltri how we have an outer chaltri how we have these two gopurams and a canal running sideways on both the sides you can see a canal running and that's how this temple is being made so a canal is placed on all the four side i think i have we have understood what this <clears throat> mean this is the most basic of this architecture this is the basics of temple architecture of chol it's only a fraction of dravid architecture it's only a part of dravid architecture very interestingly when you will see the height of taj mahal 73 meter you come four centuries back qutub minar by some inch here or there around 73 meter 
and when you will see Bhredeshwar temple. So it's also of 73 meters. Later, his son Rajendra Chol found this temple to be cursed. He transferred his capital from Tanjor to Gangai Kund Chol Puram, present day Kung Bakodam district. And he has built another temple, which is called Gangai Kund Chol Puram temple. Exact copy of Bridheshwar temple, but smaller. A smaller copy. Because neither he had time nor he had that type of resources. He had resources, obviously. Gangai Kond Chol Puram Temple. So we will see a sort of copy of Bredeshwar Temple on the same principles, on the same method. I don't think anyone can even make a lot of difference. See what's the difference between these two. So built on the exact principles, built on the exact architecture, many a time one can get confused ki he is watching whatever. So Gangai Kon, Cholpuram temple. That's why we do not make the temple again. I am sure if you have made this temple once or twice, it will be a lot easier for you to understand it. Now let's come to our another topic, which is the Chol architecture. It won't take a lot of time. So by end of modern age, by the end of modern age, a style of architecture, a style of statue building appeared in Shung age at Sanchi and Bharhut, if I have to make a Sanchi and Bharhut, we are talking post-modern age, second century, first century BC. By first century AD, there were three styles which developed in Afghanistan, Gandhar style, in the region of Delhi, UP, Mathura style. And in this Kaveri Godavari Delta under Sat Vahan Amravati style. When we will study Amravati style, we will see the Amravati style has thin bodies. Thin bodies. Sharp noses, elongated faces. This is the elongated elongated. This is the style later picked by Pallav who ruled in the same region and later by Chol who also lived in the same age. And we are discussing about 9th to 11th or 12th century I guess in the flow of class I should have told you earlier but generally I do not take it as a separate topic though. Before the class itself, I will make it sure that you know what time we are in. 9 to 12th Chol period. So Chol have picked this style of architecture. Thin bodies, sharp noses, elongated faces. In Indus Valley civilization, there was a lot of copper used, but not a bronze. A lot of bronze is not used because in India there was always a scarcity of tin. By the time we have got tin in our own country, it was too late and already we were using iron. So when you already have iron, you do not need bronze because obviously bronze is stronger than copper but not stronger than iron. So when good quantity of bronze being melted or made in India, this was the time we already have a developed Iron Age. Therefore, the majority of bronze was used to make statues. By Pal in 6th, 7th, 8th century, came in UPSC 2020. Or by Pallav in 8th, 9th, 10th century. Or by Chol, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th century. So these statues were, or the architecture, we are talking about a sculpture of Chol.
are largely sculpture are largely of bronze however it's not purely bronze bronze you means copper plus steel it has three other metals that's why the statues are made of five metals called panch law panch law those are the five metals being used wait a second so that's the use of five types of metal called punch law and in this punch law it's only bronze and other materials let's see what's their basic style so they can and why these statues were made first why these statues were made so there are two types of worship two types of worship one worship is inside temple inside temple when you will move into temple you will see the lingam worship lingam is being worshiped by pouring milk ghee water on the shivling by brahmins and there will come a period called sadarn bhakti movement from which shankara char madhava char ramanuja char will develop so when the sadarn bhakti movement around appeared around 8th century ad people claimed that they also have to worship everyone should have right to worship so rather than allowing them inside the sanctum sanctorium the god was taken out of the sanctum sanctorium into the temple compound however god could not be taken in the form of lingam because lingam is installed there a lot of statues of god were being made known as utsav murti utsav murti they are taken out acha generally you must have seen the statues looks naked when you will see so they are clothless the reason is these utsav murti are being clothed by devotees they are torn they are draped by sari or they are draped by the clothes it's not the form they are worshiped in which you see them in in these museums so it's not in this naked form they are being worshiped so they are taken out and that's why you must have seen vahan mandap these statues are made on a platform a platform hoga on which the statues being made and at the bottom of these platform you will see holes so that big wood can be taken on both side of this hole and can be held yes i think you must have seen palki i don't know what palki is called in english but as the palki moves they put sticks in these holes and hold the statue so these statues are clothed they are called utsav murti taken out and when they are taken out you will see there are lot of music music will be played because now god will be worshiped by people in their own form as they used to worship the folk nachna gana so music which developed into later carnatic music during vijayanagar empire the dance which later developed into devdasi system and also gave all our classical dances bharatnatyam kuchipudi mohiniattam then odia odissi satriya all these dances were temple dances and when god is available outside the sanctum sanctorium in human form we started pleasing him that's the main purpose of these statues what is the process in which the statues were made called a lost wax process lost wax process now how to make it first you will make a clay statue sorry first you will make a wax statue statue made up of wax 
and when the statue is being made, we will drape it by clay. So there will be a wax statue on top of it. We have a clay and a hole. We will start. We will start heating up the clay. Entire wax will melt and will be lost. That's lost wax. And the cavity will be created exactly of the shape of our statue in which we will pour the metal. We will take it up upwards. The hole will be taken upwards where we will pour the molten metal. And metal will settle in the shape of earlier wax statue. After that, clay will be broken. The clay mold will be broken. Statue will be rubbed and finished. And that process called lost wax. Right from Indus Valley civilization, the statues are made with this process. That's why it's the oldest process available and it's obviously the best process also. We can also call it one of the best process. Let's see what's the style of it. So we will see the Chol style is minimalist. Minimalist style. It do not have that type of jewelry which you will see in Vijayanagar. Vijayanagar Empire. We will also have to study Vijayanagar sculpture from 14th to 16th century. So Vijayanagar style has a lot of jewelry. Chol style do not have that sort of jewelry. The bodies of Chol style are slender. Slender body. And round curves rather than edgy curves what we have seen in Pallav style unlike earlier Pallav style. So while studying we have to keep matching. That's why that's how only we can have our understanding. Unlike Pallav style, Chol style has round curve. I'll show you the Chol statue. Don't worry. Then the most interesting aspect if I have to make a Chol statue. So first they have a long headgear. Long headgear. Then almond eyes. I don't know what you understand from almond eyes. Eyes like this. That's almond eyes. Interestingly, due to RN influence or whatever, a sharp nose. A sharp nose. Then tender lips, very thin lips. I don't know what I have made, but tender lips, thin lips. Lips are not very heavy. Obviously, females are made proportionately smaller than males. So females are smaller. You will be able to smaller than males. And then we will see if you watch any sculpture. So rather than unlike our passport photo where we stay still and the photograph is taken, the photographs are taken like some event was going on. It will be the signature style of Amravati school. Later adopted by Pallav and later even Chol will adopt the same style. Ki when you will look at the sculpture, you will feel they are doing something. Like a woman is resting her hand like this. Now it means she is resting her hand just for the photograph purpose. It's not unnatural stillness. I don't know how many of you can understand it. 
अननेचुरल लाइक शिव इन नटराज इज इन अपोज ऑफ डांसिंग इट्स नॉट दैट शिव हैज स्टॉप्ड एंड सिमिलरली जैसे इन टूडेज टेम्पल वी सी गॉड इज स्टैंडिंग लाइक दिस and having the unnatural stillness it's not there a statue can be after seeing the statue you can have a feeling that they are doing something they are moving somewhere and that's a movement in the body so statues have a movement or you can make or you can understand about their surroundings कि फीमेल इज थ्रोइंग स्पियर और गॉड इज स्लेइंग समवन और शिव इज डांसिंग तो यू कैन हैव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस एंड देन ऑल द स्टैचूज आर ऑन अ प्लेटफॉर्म एट द एंड ऑफ द प्लेटफॉर्म वी विल सी द होल्स फ्रॉम वेयर वी कैन फुट आर स्टिक्स एंड कैन होल्ड इट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस हिंदू गॉड्स a lot of buddh jain and other stage other buddh buddhism jainism and other statues are being made even the statues of kings themselves so there are other humans also made but very rare humans are not very prevalent sometimes there can be a statue of king at best understand the king who is funding all this even his statues are there now one of the most famous chol specimen obviously it's not started by chol it's started by pallav the dancing shiv the dancing shiv showing tandav tandav means the dance of the dance of destruction now if you see ki how this statue is being made so first there is a sphere or a circle in this two dimension although it's a sphere in mythology sphere of fire sphere of fire showing universe and shiv by one of his hand is holding the fire by one of his hand he holds the stage he holds the universe one of his hand has in other of the form the third hand is in gajhast mudra gajhast mudra is like elephant we put our hand and one hand is in dancing pose one of the feet is crossed another feet is trampling over a demon ek ye jo one feet is raised this raised feet shows liberation and another feet is trampling over a door a demon called up samhar up samhar this is the shiv's the dance of shiv which shows the cosmic principle of creation and destruction and the creation and liberation and destruction again so this is how the cycle moves he is holding the universe where he first liberates him first crushes the demon liberates himself destruct the world and again the world will come into being and that's why a lot of scientists have accepted that this is what the basic principle of atomic science or the cosmic science is and that's why we will see outside the cern library or cern laboratory not a library cern laboratory we can have a nataraj this is statue is called nataraj nataraj means outside the cern laboratory we can see the statue of nataraj is being placed a matter of pride for us obviously for an indian because 
according to indian scientist and various other scientist also have mentioned it ki this is what the dance of creation and destruction is theek hai so that's how it goes and this is the basics of chol architecture their temple and their sculpture now wait a moment and i'll stop this sharing and i'll share my computer screen where i'll show you the various statues and marked one so that you will be able to see so these are the two i have taken away a lot of sculpture we have to go to chol sculpture so these are the photos i have marked now when you will see this lady see her head gear it's high see her nose how sharp it is see her eyes how almond eyes she had and the lack of a lot of jewelry when you will compare it to vijayanagar sculpture you will have a lot of jewelry and see how her knees and shoulders are round so these are the round shoulders she had this is how they clothe her it's not that we worship her in this form obviously she is being worshiped in this form where she is clothed and then you will see now special focus on the nose how elongated nose is how eyes are and the most important thing what i want to convey is look at her hand she is holding something it's not that she has a stop to pose her body is somewhat tilted it means out of respect either she is passing on something or she is holding we cannot make out but still and i want you to see the holes at bottom holes at bottom that's how these holes are this man he is holding his hand somewhere and this female is trying to pass on something or whatever i don't know this is perhaps anjali mudra where gods are not shown so he must be a king or a devotee he could not be a god because he is showing the anjali mudra and look at the queen her body is relatively very smaller and also she is holding something she has not stopped to give the pose this is famous lakshmi narayan or i think shiv parvati and when you will see parvati so her hand is like this where she is taking generally this is the pose of shiv where his hand is like this and he is about to drink the poison so this is where parvati is being shown this is called varad mudra in buddhism it's called varad mudra not here i feel we all can see the holes and the elongated headgear this is the similar statue again this is the nataraj see the sharp nose almond eyes and that's how we can make out the type of shapes and bodies and head gear and eyes so basically when you will understand so it will be similar other statues are also made it's the statue of gautam buddh yesterday was his birthday to this is varad mudra and abhay mudra gautam buddha is being shown vardhaman mahavir is shown and that's nataraj see one feet trampling the dwarf dwarf demon one feet is shown in appraised liberation one hand is holding damru that's the war cry of destruction one hand is holding the universe one hand is in the gajhast mudra the fourth is in the abhay mudra obviously not everyone will be destructed means of its destruction of universe but on the basis of good and bad so it's the statue at cern so we have around 22 photographs and for the help of students all the photographs are marked 
so that whenever we will come to the theory of chol so like when we will study chol sculpture to so second point at the last if it is in ch1 so we go to chol sculpture and open the ch1 so that's how notes and these slides are generally now la, la, if you read this point it should be noted that in worship these images are covered in silk costumes so ch2 so just open the ch2 and you will be able to understand it. then you will see in comparison of both vijayanagar and nayak period to so ch3 the devoid of design and jewelry so this is how you do it. so it's about the chol architecture and chol sculpture